Alright, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings Here. Uh, in, uh, you know, the character known as in Mendham, I don't know, somebody trying to be um, persuasive and interesting, but not trying very hard. <laughs> that's the, you know, I, yeah, that's the downside. Uh, not trying hard enough. Um, you know, it's just not one of my skills, and so I suck at it. Uh, but anyway, I have to do it anyway because no one else is doing it better. So um, I will until somebody does it better. Frankly, uh, defend the position, okay, that uh, yes, the whole biological infestation covering the surface of Earth is an insidious crime against decency. Um, this silly experiment where you know, organisms are used uh, and abused and enslaved to the replication of a DNA molecule into some sort of whatever uh, superbug. And that's all it really is, is a superbug. You know. and, and we're stuck in sort of this weird ground where we've acquired enough intelligence to step out of the game to separate ourselves from how it's played uh, through intelligent um, apprehension and um, what's the word? Oh, it's always you know, this vocabulary thing. They just disappear. Inhibition. You know, we have this intellectual inhibition where this these principles and ideals, you know fall into our picture of reality and we're obligated to take responsibility for our actions and we can't drink and drive and can't throw banana peels <laughs> willy-nilly you know lots of things we can't do because um, we understand it has a negative consequence blah 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 and the real argument is just recognizing that procreating is throwing banana peels it's doing something really stupid uh, pointless really reckless sloppy um, unnecessary harm is being um, the door to it is being opened for no good reason and really a conversation about uh, what people should do about it and um, uh, and just in a way testing how really certain you can be in the position I mean so certain that yes uh, you'll take control if that's what it requires if you if you have to be uh, the essential mechanism to make something happen then you'll be it you know you'll uh, almost volunteer to be crucified on the cross you know to save everyone from harm <laughs> yeah um, you know you won't be lamenting um, uh, the opportunity uh, and you would take advantage of it because, you know, the certainty is really secure. So anyway, so it's sort of just making that argument in which your counter argument is against is um, just usually, well, always um, some sort of fable about function, some sort of silly story about how it's something other than a bug planet, that we're something other than bugs that can sing and dance and do a few other things. Um, you know, invent the dildo, you know, we can do these really impressive things. And um, therefore, life has merit because, you know, we can sing and dance so well that, you know, you just can't, you know, how could you argue against it? Who cares how much it costs? Who cares how many little creatures have to suffer, including human beings? And so, yeah, you're stuck with just almost nothing as a counter argument. Um, and it's, you know, in the face of uh, something just grotesquely, obscenely negative and bad. And, uh, yeah, it just doesn't make much sense. And it really should be easy to um, make the argument and convince people that, well, grow up and smell the shit. Um, you know, yeah, it's all been fun. <laughs> but, yeah, let's not, uh, you know let's not perpetrate the crime uh, you know uh, in perpetuity uh, let's stop uh, the criminal behavior uh, and we have an obligation to do that uh, responsibility to victims to come to the rescue um, and sometimes you're going to have to do that 
by fighting everyone. So let's say let's say we still threw virgins into volcanoes because we thought you know the gods would be pleased. You can't you know it's just when you start thinking about what people actually thought worked, it's just so bad. Um, you know, witches, uh, <laughs> burning witches. I mean, just too silly. Anyway. Um, so yeah, what if they we still had that policy and you had a whatever you know sixteen sweet sixteen year old daughter, and she was pulled out of the hat and she's going to be thrown into the volcano, and the whole theory is they're going to you know murder your daughter in this horrific way, throw her into hot lava, um, and <laughs> their whole excuse is you know some kind of wacky theory that. Um, you know, there's a God who needs the suffering of young girls to, um, you know, un, un, you know, girls that haven't been had yet, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, to, to quench some disease he has, you know, it cures his, you know, it's like eating fetuses or something. It's somehow it's, yeah. And you're just like, oh, come on. Can I see something like an x-ray? Can I see some evidence that this guy really does need this to happen? Um, and that you have to do this harm, this you have to torture my daughter. Um, and so what exactly do you, know, you think you would do? Do you really think you would just acquiesce and say, okay, well, that's the system. And, you know, the system is the system. And you have to respect the system. So, yeah, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, okay, go ahead Take her away. <laughs> Go ahead, torture my daughter. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, I, I guess you could make it even worse. Like, you could make it some really horrible torture, you know, where they actually, like, tear her abdomen open and pull out her ovaries and show them to her and then, you know, eat them or something. Uh, <laughs> you know, whatever. But, yes, so are you going to fight or are you going to just say, oh, okay, good enough. That's a good enough reason for me. I mean, yeah, that whole God, you know, needs you know, cancer therapy that involves, you know, killing virgins. Yeah, sure, sure, I understand. Uh, now, you're going to say, fuck you, you're too silly, and you're going to do whatever you can to, you know, fight uh, the system, okay, that's that stupid and insensitive. So I guess this would not be as hard an argument if, if there was some yielding, like if it was something other than Biden and Trump. You know, if it was something other than some idiotic two choices, you know, that you don't, you want to do this the simple way or do you want to do this the hard way? And, you know, it doesn't have to, like I said, you can describe it in some way where, you know, look, we just gracefully exit. We don't have to exit in some instant way. We don't have to exit without saying goodbye to all the good fun stuff. You know, have a last big dance show and, you know, a last jump the highest show and a last run the fastest show and, woo, and we can all get excited and have fun. Um, you know, we can have a party, uh, you know, like, you know, even dying, you know, people can die, you know, kind of miserably or they can die gracefully and with dignity and all that kind of crap. And that that's the real evil here is that the, the sides that are fighting for the liberty and the sides that are opposed, they're just so rigid. And, you know, if they would yield a little bit, you know, to the conversation and concede that, uh, yes, the animal condition is horrible and we can't leave it the way it is, okay? I mean, we certainly can't exit without fixing it. And we certainly, we couldn't justify exiting without fixing it. And, um, you know, we, we have a certain obligation to be, um, quite aware of what it costs for our song and dance. That if you know if we're going to be murdering, you know, incarcerating and murdering uh, sentient organisms for our comfort and happiness, well, then our comfort and happiness is too expensive, and we have to moderate our our blood footprint, our our you know the high price of our maintenance. You know, we can't be that high maintenance. Uh, if our civilization demands that much, it's demanding too much. And they should be at least be able to concede these arguments, you know, that, oh, yeah, well, it's obvious that, you know, uh, incarcerating and torturing and then killing uh, sentient animals, um, it doesn't look good, and <laughs> there's just really no way to say it's a good thing. It's obviously a bad thing, and it's just acknowledging 
that we should migrate to something better than that and you know and we should do it rather passionately because we should recognize that um, this is just bullshit I mean to pretend your dog and a pig are two different things that somehow you can torture pigs and it doesn't matter but you can't even inconvenience your dog without you getting upset I mean you know the hypocrisies and the illogic are just so abundant anyway so yes we're so back on the red button thing and again it's not about a red button it's about a lifeboat it's about a commitment it's about recognizing that there really isn't that that almost the worst most extreme action is justified because there really isn't any alternative there really isn't any hope that their theory of reality is correct that it is all for the best that somehow this is all productive and that all the people dead on battlefields and that all the kids with cancer and that all the people crushed in earthquakes and all the horror sadness the orphanages the disabilities the deformities all of it has somehow spectacularly been worth it all the choking bad death oh god damn um yeah you know, just uh, you know it's a ludicrous position to say oh yeah i'm but we have any hope that it's worth it it has been worth it or it would be worth it or it will be worth it or any of that there's just no hope all right so um this is uh Mare Hari guy um <clears throat> and he's revisiting his own argument conceding it, it wasn't very good and but conceding it wasn't very good for reasons that i think were just stupid uh the reason why it's not a very good argument is because it doesn't make any you know it doesn't make any logical sense to talk about a cause for which you have no passion for which you'll do nothing essentially um in defiance of the system and again he doesn't even set it up as a question of at what level of democratic majority do you need what level of democratic majority is necessary to say outlaw selling your kids or molesting your kids or raping women or uh drunk driving i mean what level of of majority means you're you have the authority to override the ambitions of the people you're going to criminalize <clears throat> he doesn't even talk about that and that's the real question isn't it it's going to sink um and um the stupid democracy says well too bad uh, then you know we guess we're all going to die so i was just using the lifeboat example that if you know you have the gun you and and we're just pretending it's a positive outcome that people don't get eaten by sharks and drowned <clears throat> and that would be better if they can get to shore and then die you know in some drier way so that's the assumption that there's some value in saving lives rather than disposing of them and again that's a reach from my perspective but i'm just saying clearly most people would understand the mission of the lifeboaters is to survive not die and if you want to survive you have to do certain things and that's just a fact of being in a lifeboat and the democracy won't do those things so it's just like recognizing that you know if you if you made all legislation up to the democracy everybody would pay no taxes and everybody would get a million dollars you know so there'd be silly the democracy would vote for something that can't happen that can't work and clearly that's also a problem you know in any kind of scenario you describe where you're taking well let's ask the people to drive the bus collectively okay <laughs> because the collective intelligence is always lower than the highest intelligence right a lot lower and that's the problem is you want the best qualified person to fly the plane you don't want to fly the plane based on a okay should i turn left or should i turn right you know and somebody says yeah turn right because i flipped a coin or somebody says turn right because well i named my kid mr right <laughs> yeah any anyway, you know so always go right uh you know oh that kind of silliness would be making the decision so the simple scenario is is <clears throat> you have the gun do you give the gun to the democracy okay you do what it says or do you say f 
you know, the democracy has a plan that cannot possibly succeed, do you exert your better judgment and save the day? You know, simple enough question. I don't think most people who have done any, uh, any, <laughs> any serious thinking about life and being in a maze and the fact that, you know, everything does sort of have to be engineered and you do have to do things rationally and logically. You can't build bridges based on what a bazooka bubblegum wrapper says, you know, that kind of crap. Um, that, that you really do have to engineer success. It isn't just something that happens. Um, <clears throat> would recognize that, yes, you pick up the gun. You keep the gun and you, you do the right thing. You don't do the wrong thing. All right. Something like that, anyway. There's nothing smarter than a shark or an octopus, that kind of thing. That's as smart as it gets. All right, so using Mars as an example. So Mars has everything we have except smart things. So all the animals are just dumb. So the smartest thing is whatever. Rhinoceros, I don't care. What level you stop at. And it doesn't evolve into anything else. Um... You know, over millions of years. And so what do you do with the Martian biosphere? Do you sit there and just, you know, just just, um, just watch all the blood spill out and the squirt and, you know, just say, oh, isn't that all magnificent, the blood geysers? Uh, you know, or do you recognize, oh, shit, this is a terrible problem and uh, we should do something about it. So let's make a button, you know, to do something about it. Um so would you vote for making the button? Would you vote for pressing that button? I mean, can you even get that one right? Um, can you even imagine that there would be no purpose in those Martian animal suffering? That there's absolutely no reasoning that you could apply? I mean, obviously it's not God's fault. Obviously God isn't running their world. There's no Jesus stories. There's no anything. All right, there's just a bunch of little children being gratuitously slaughtered. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> That's it. There's a huge mass of 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 slaves to a to a biological replicating experiment, and most of the the deaths will be in organisms that couldn't have possibly done anything to deserve their fate. <laughs> They're going to have a horrible fate, and um, they didn't do anything wrong. Uh, they didn't make any mistakes, um, and they're just going to be tortured for absolutely. Uh, for, for a useless spectacle that only a sadistic lunatic could find any value in. And that's just the truth of it. Or you're going to be confused by, oh, it's pretty. It's pretty. So, yes, I don't care. As long as the painting is pretty, you can make it out of out of 10-year-old's blood. You know, you can suck the blood out of 10-year-old's paint or painting. And as long as it's pretty, well, it's okay. I don't care that you tormented or tortured or killed little 10-year-olds to paint it. Of course, you should care. You should be smart enough to step past any notion, any subjective connection to this idea of pretty colors and symmetry and uh, even function and uh, you know recognize that your intelligence has to examine it not you know some other part of you it's not about how much fun it is to rub up against it's about what the fuck it is 89 heroes okay who died to rescue one kid in all right, so <clears throat> yeah, I just talking about you know, like World War Two. You could say that you know there's a certain number of people in jeopardy, and um, you know we probably killed 100 to one. You know, some kind of weird number like that. Uh, the the number of people we rescued is really small compared to the number of people got killed to rescue them, and you'd still say it was worth it because the cause was worth it. The cause of preventing this this capture and enslavement and torment and torture. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was real. Um, yeah, just a fact. And, you know, those principles are sound. And, you know, it's, you have to respect people with actually sound principles. Victims. You have a right to try to stop somebody who's going to hurt somebody in a substantial way. And that's what... 
Yeah, and so again, it just depends on what you see procreation as, is some little crime, banana peel. Or is it metaphor to something a lot more significant than that in terms of how much certain damage will be done? You know, how much actual, real, hard, you know, time on the torture gurney is going to be imposed, okay, uh, because of that decision? That's just inevitable. I mean, the fact is your victim will die. <laughs> and... Um, there's a very high percentage that they're going to have to have a life that has a lot of grief and hardship in it because very few people have some other kind of life and that's what you're really doing and it's it's nothing but a kind of murder a kind of it's a hard real crime not some minor mistake philosopher you know whatever um and so so i mean you can't metaphor to like okay so the society says that your your daughter has to get slapped in the face okay now yeah if that's all you were doing is okay if that's all the civilization was doing was slapping your daughter in the face well yeah that's not so much so yeah maybe you're not going to pull out your winchester and you know go to war um so clearly you do have to understand that, you know, procreation isn't just some um, minor decision. It is this obnoxious thing where you're going to force something into existence. They're going to force it to eat your food and to smell you and to like you and all that kind of crap. Uh, live your definition of a life, um, your values, you know, you the potato farmer, <laughs> you know, whatever you are. Um, it's just so obnoxiously arrogant. And then in, in the envelope of what if the kid is born deformed? What if the kid is just unlucky, drug addiction, some other things? Uh, you know, his wife ends up with a, his girlfriend has herpes or something. And this, this, I mean, all these negative things that can just cascade out of a life. And you're the one just saying, go ahead, roll all these dice with all these horrible things on it. And that is obnoxiously mean, cruel, nasty. Um, you know, but it's hard to see that just because we're so brainwashed into thinking it's some loving thing that people are doing. You know, when it's really, you got to hate your kids to subject them to the, what you're subjecting them to. I mean, what's love got to do with torture? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. And you know it's coming. Because look at these people. I mean, some of these people, you know, lately, you know, oh, I, you know, I don't want to get, it's just, I, so, so the people who ha I have been noticed of their, their birth event, they're all fat lately. I mean, really fat. And you're just saying, you can't even control your own weight. And you're going to decide to create a human being. And you know your your husband's bald at 22. I mean, you know all these. You're just saying, how can you be so reckless and sloppy and stupid to think that somebody's going to really appreciate this wonderful gift you're providing, where you can't even control your life, and you're going to now somehow um, protect this precious thing, you know, when you couldn't even protect your precious. Uh, just an amazingly arrogant, uh, obnoxiously stupid, uh, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense for people who can't engineer their own successful path through life to think they're going to now engineer somebody else's. I mean, it's just so fucking silly. Bunch of problems for the future to fix. <laughs> and uh, so why have any of that happen? Uh, yeah, so it's just a general statement about procreation, you know, it's just blah, 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 blah. explanation that apparently nobody else has anymore. So you're just some lunatic with some really fringe beliefs. And now you're going to veto. <laughs> right. So that's essentially what the, you know, in some respect, the Mahdi Hari guy is arguing that somehow some whack job that has some silly notions can veto all legislation that would 
prevent um, something, you know, dioxin ending up in the drinking water. You know, that somehow somebody has some sacred right to pour dioxin in the drinking water uh, and that we can't violate his interests. I mean, uh, it's too ridiculous an argument. Byproduct and arrangement of, of um, you know, neurons and electricity, and you're never going to figure out the difference between a thought and a feeling. And okay, so the thing that came up in there somewhere is that they, you know, they, they, they all these qualifying, all these technical jargon, all this crap people are injecting into the subject, but uh, apparently they've injected some notion that we have to protect the future AIs, you know, because, you know, somehow they're qualify, uh, you know, and it's, it's a ridiculous, you know, on so many levels. First, why would we ever make a feeling thing, even if we could, out of an AI? But, I mean, the idea that you could actually synthesize sensation is ridiculous. There's no way you're we're ever, 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 all right, going to have the technology to duplicate the distinction in our brain between a feeling and a thought, um, the mechanisms that are causing it, there's just no way we could ever synthesize that. It's just, that is never going to happen. And it's just a ridiculous notion that you could somehow, that there's some way you could, you could, you could incrementally, like flying, that you could somehow incrementally get off that ground. You can never incrementally create a sentient being because, frankly, you can't tell that it's sentient until it can say, ouch, and that, so it needs a, a voice and it needs a capacity to be able to explain what it is actually happening to it and all kinds of other things. And that wouldn't help you any if only its foot was sentient. You know, what if you only made part of its brain sentient and that part wasn't connected to the part that could talk? I mean, it's just, it, uh, you'd end up, in, in, you know, even if you could start making something called feelings, you'll never know how much feelings you've created. You don't know how much pain and suffering you'd be imposing with your experiments so yeah there's no way there's no practical way to get to an artificial sentient it's just shouldn't really be part of the conversation it's such a fringe silly notion oh we have to go to mars and tear it down well don't we have to talk about what they built i mean why would i have to tear it down unless i have a cause unless i have a reason a justification uh uh, theory, right? Some... So, I mean, it's just, yeah, and again, when, how big a violation is is allowable before you say it's too much of a violation? You know, when do you come to the rescue? When you say enough is enough, no mas, uh, you know, uh, go to war. I mean, is there any option? And it, I'd argue in some cases there's no option. It doesn't matter what everybody else says it just matters that it's either really dumb or um, reasonable I mean you have no obligation to placate insanely stupid notions um, and uh, but you know obviously most people are going to die um, you know painfully and expensively <laughs> and do, do, do the parents pay for that? Yeah, so that's all, like, again, it's just so simple an argument to make about what procreation is and just like, why would you want to do that to somebody? Wouldn't that be a very good argument? Like you're talking to some 10-year-old kid and talking about your his future and the idea of having kids and couldn't you just make that first argument? Well, you know, if you have kids, they're going to die and they're going to die probably not very well. I mean, very badly. And uh, do you really want to be, do you want that on you? You want to be responsible for causing all of that unpleasantness, that choking death. That's pretty, it's a pretty powerful argument, in my opinion. I mean, nobody made that argument to me as a kid, but if somebody did, I would say, oh, shit, you're right, man, that really means it sucks. I, I was kind of against it, but yeah, now I'm really against it. Personal. I've had enough of a personal taste of feeling oppressed um, by a bunch of stupidity. And then as soon as I say the, the word stupid... Right, so it's really just recognizing this whole thing of how this is enslavement, it's against consent, it's, and, and it's just so obviously flawed and imperfect. So this is nothing like a gift. It's like nothing you're allowed to throw into somebody else's front lawn. Um, this is, you know, 
this is a, something that can blow up in all kinds of nasty ways and it's got to be called what it is uh, just recklessly stupid to um, make these uh, devices that create a, a future implication of the existence of a harm that didn't need to exist talk about um, you know some sacred you know this the sacredness of of our holy Olympic champion you know and it's worth so again that's probably another argument it's really good is just trying to list what exactly human beings are doing that's just so fucking worth it that it's worth even squishing slowly to death one rabbit let alone the real blood footprint which is every second there's like a billion sentient brains on this planet going through their death throes um, agonizing suffering and uh, that's the price for this <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm sorry it's pretty hard to explain what we're doing to be worth it again the obnoxiousness of people who claim to be worth it to claim that their story the story of their life is worth um, you know the pool of blood it cost this compulsion machine and it's 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 hungry for the continuum you know it it's it's seeking the next minute so yeah so I was a little bit I was talking just about the fact that yeah that's what it's like to be alive I mean alive is is you compulsively want to live more you want to do the next minute the next 10 minutes the next half hour you've got plans you've got things your agenda uh, and that's how we're made which is you know that's the way we're made but we can understand that well if that was in fact interrupted <laughs> and you all of a sudden just disappeared from existence there wouldn't be some residue left over where there's still something seeking still something wanting still something any of that stuff but the fact is is that um, it wouldn't be a loss to the universe and uh, the absence of your of everything all the negative that would have been all the all the harm to you that would have eventually happened that would have been prevented would be well worth the discomfort of just dealing with the fact that your story actually sucks and <laughs> it really isn't that interesting you're not gonna make a movie out of it you know um, your life uh, nope not nearly not really worth anything you know you can have a millions of sentient brains tortured every second of our existence yeah well that's you don't need to say much else right that's the price and what do you what's on the other side what what's you know it's the weekend so there's going to be big sports fun happening is that it that's all we get the big sports fun is going to happen so that's that's worth it you know billions of tortured little brains big sports fun Sorry, ridiculous. Uh, and such. So, I guess that covers it pretty much. So, not one of my best videos, I would guess I would argue, but sometimes that's subjective and all that kind of crap. Uh, it's in the, the subject matter it needs to be picked at more, um, you know, in some more rational way than in um, thought experiments that have nothing to do with the subject almost. So the real thought experiment is is it, what level of of what level of um, agreement among human beings is uh, required to step on the sacred procreation right? You know exactly what kind of majority would be necessary uh, for the sacred procreation to be suspended, uh, or at least again, all you really have to do is keep the <laughs> you know the the sacred procreation right you almost don't need a law against it if you just make a law against stupid ignorant moronic people being you know injected into your civilization so if we stop injecting morons uh, frankly the problem is already solved and we didn't even have to talk about it I mean that's the irony 
is you know the civilized world is not playing the DNA game anymore, and um, now it's in the process of decivilizing, <laughs> and, and uh, nothing good will come of that, of course. Um, you know, I, I mean the the average income of the child born is doing this thing, going way way down, and that's really not good. And that should scare the fuck out of you. If nothing, if the whole subject doesn't bother you <laughs> in some way, it should bother you that <clears throat> the new the new adventurers are are starting from a position where they're not going to have the advantages you had. They're going to be starting from a, a lesser condition than the average condition, you know, 40 years ago. All right, so anyway, till the next time and such. Uh, we've let poor people rule the world. M more directly, ignorant people rule the world. Okay, so till the next time. And, you know, it's, it's because the smart people are too busy, you know, carving statues of each other. <laughs> you know, they're really so useless to society. Uh, anyway, so till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. I think that's enough. I'll say it's enough. Yeah, it's, it's enough. I'm pretty damn sure it's enough. <laughs>